Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Tuesday, October 27, 2015. I'm David Knight. Here are our top stories. Tonight. Territory disputes raise tensions between the U.S. and China. Then, Texas Governor Greg Abbott tells the BLM to come and take it. And creepy tech is coming to a home near you. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. But, I mean, it, it's there. It's, it's Wired Magazine, you name it. Wired Magazine headline, CIA director. Your dishwasher is spying on you. And, and, and I go on and I say, hey, everything is being engineered with spy grids in it. And the government admits they're watching you enlisting without warrants. And they start laughing at me. behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> As if we needed another hotspot, now we have a conflict developing in the South China Sea between the United States and the government of China. But there's something that has been going on for quite some time, and we'll talk about how we got to this point and what is involved. Here's the article from Infowars.com. China is not frightened to fight a war with the U.S. after a warship incident. This is what a mouthpiece for the Chinese government, said the Global Times, a Chinese Communist Party mouthpiece, published an editorial asserting that Beijing is, quote, not frightened to fight a war with the United States as a result of the passage of a U.S. warship near disputed islands in the South China Sea. Now, this was a guided missile destroyer, the USS Lassen. It violated a 12 nautical mile zone that China claims around Subi and Mischief Reefs in the Spratly Archipelago yesterday. Now, understand these islands that they passed within 12 miles of are man-made islands made by the Chinese government built on top of coral reefs, and we'll give you more information about that in just a moment. But they point out experts have warned that an accidental collision between aircraft similar to a 2001 incident which led to an international controversy, could spark a deadly conflict. Yeah, you know, maybe something like the Gulf of Tonkin. That was uh, close to the South China Sea. We're going to look at the geography in just a moment. That was the pretext for the Vietnam War. That was how Lyndon Johnson used it. Listen to this clip. America wins the wars that she undertakes. Make no mistake about it. And we have declared war on tyranny and aggression. If this little nation goes down the drain and can't maintain her independence, ask yourself what's going to happen to all the other little nations. So what's going to happen to all those other little tiny nations? Well, we know now. We lost the war. Vietnam went Chinese. And as Robert McNamara, when he admitted that the Gulf of Tonkin was a false flag. He also said that the Vietnamese told him when he met with him decades later, there never was any domino theory. They said, we have always fought the Chinese for our independence, and they are now, even though they're both communist nations. So now the United States evidently is taking the side of the Vietnamese government against China, even though the Vietnamese government is communist. Well, what's behind this? Who's acting provocatively here? Well, I would say that both nations are acting provocatively. And as Watson's article pointed out, 
Uh, experts have said that we are at the closest point to war between China and the United States that we've been in 20 years. Let's take a look at what's going on here in the South China Sea. Now, the diplomat points out, since 2011, both China and Vietnam have both asserted conflicting claims to the South China Sea. Beijing claims 90% of the South China Sea as its exclusive economic zone. They reportedly have moved oil rigs into disputed areas. They've dredged. They've occupied parts of the disputed Paracel Islands. They've constructed at least one and potentially multiple airstrips for military use around the Spratly Islands. Now, even though this is called the South China Sea, we're going to take a look at the geography of this. It is not close to China. That's like saying that the Gulf of Mexico all belongs to Mexico. They also point out that Vietnam has also tried to use oil exploration to claim a disputed area of the sea, reportedly has rammed Chinese vessels in disputed waters. For much of the 1990s and 2000s, China's government although never relinquishing long-standing claims to the South China Sea, took a less assertive approach. Yet in the past five years, China has reasserted claims to roughly 90% of the sea, as we pointed out. The U.S. Geological Survey estimates that the sea contains as much as 290 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. So there's a lot of energy to be exploited out of that area. They also point out the South China Sea accounts for about one-tenth of the entire annual global fish count. So there are massive resources in this area. Let's take a look at the map. When you look at this map, you can see the Gulf of Tonkin is up close to Vietnam. You can see that little niche up there. The, Sprat the Spratly Islands, however, as you look at those, they are very close to the Philippines, very close to the Philippines. These islands that have been built are artificial islands. As The Guardian has pointed out, China's artificial islands led to tension in the South China Sea. And they say that this is, and they point out correctly, it's not even just the last five years. It's really within the last 18 months or so, most of it within the last nine months of this year. They say China has dramatically stepped up land reclamation work on reefs and the atolls it claims and the Spratly Island chain in the South China Sea. They also are claimed by the Philippines, which are very close to them geographically, by Taiwan, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Brunei. Chinese ships have been dredging new harbors while cranes have been erected in an attempt to build artificial islands atop submerged reefs. There is evidence of airstrips, as we just pointed out. The U.S. has protested the work is illegal and destabilizing, and for months the Pentagon has been pushing the White House to take a firmer stance. Now, they say that these claims on the Spratleys and the Paracel Islands to the north are based more on historic settlement than on geographical proximity. And you can see that, that these islands are very close to the Philippines. So if we look at what they're doing there, even the environmentalists, conservationists are very concerned about what China is doing. Take a look at these pictures from The Guardian. They took satellite pictures and they showed these coral reefs over about a two-year period, how they have changed. And you can see as you slide that slider, you can see what China has built there. They point out that as China races to extend its military reach, and I would say also massive economic reach going after this natural gas oil reserves, it is turning pristine habitats into permanent islands. Satellite images of the South China Sea show rapid destruction of some of the most biodiverse coral reefs in the world. The reclamation of land and the contested Spratly Archipelago to build runways, military outposts, even small towns is endangering ecosystems that are key to maintaining world fish stocks and biodiversity. So this is what's happening there. The, the Chinese are moving rapidly to consolidate this area to assert that they are in control of this. But of course, the United States is not going to allow that to happen. There are multiple nations involved. Uh, some of the principal conflict here, of course, has been between Vietnam and China, ironically. But uh, you can see that they're very close to the Philippines and there are other countries that are involved. So what the United States has done, even though they were warned by the Chinese, this is our land and we have claimed it, uh, don't come through here. The American government sent this vessel very close to one of these islands, did not tell the Chinese that they were coming, did not give them any advance warning did not turn back when confronted, as you've seen with the uh, tapes that we played on the Alex Jones radio show earlier today, and they would not apologize for it. They said these are international waters, I believe that they are, and they said that they are going to go through that area whenever and wherever they wish. There's an important lesson in that, and that is that if you allow somebody to infringe upon property that is not theirs and allow that to stay there, 
That infringement then makes that property theirs. That's an important thing to think about when we look at our own government's infringement on our own rights. First of all, the Second Amendment. It's not property rights, but our rights as human beings, our rights as citizens are our property as well, in a sense. And we understood, of course, the founders understood that this would come about by a process of gradual infringement, moving into an area, asserting control over that area, then refusing to move back. And once you allow that to stand, if you do not challenge that, then that property becomes theirs. That is the essential principle that we have always seen. And now we can see that with the BLM in multiple cases where they're coming asserting their ownership over property rights that were surface rights for grazing or mineral rights beneath the surface that they had been held by people, by miners for 150, sometimes more uh, years, having title to those particular rights or water rights or the land itself. And of course, this is what's happening in Texas. We have talked about the story that came out about, uh, I guess it broke again a couple of weeks ago. It actually surfaced as the Bundy Ranch situation was happening. The BLM at the same time was asserting that it was going to take 90,000 acres of privately held land in Texas away from its lawful owners. At the same time, they were taking away the grazing rights from the last remaining ranchers in Nevada. This is something that is now coming to the surface with one particular rancher. They're coming after his ranch. They say that they're going, by moving the boundary with the Red River, they're going to take half of his ranch as well as his home. We reported this. We had an article uh, just about uh, 10 days ago, Texas rancher fights back against BLM land grab. He says it's a land grab as far as I'm concerned. This is private property. That was on October the 13th, 2015. We've seen just this last weekend, the BLM illegally killing massive numbers of horses. They turned over 2,000 horses to a private individual who slaughtered them. They didn't vet him to see why he was getting so many horses. Even after they were warned that horses were being illegally slaughtered, they continued with this kind of crony capitalism, and this is exactly what is involved. It cost $140,000 for the taxpayers to deliver the horses. He paid only $18,000 for them and then turned around and slaughtered them for $154,000 profit. We know this is what's behind most of the land grabs that the BLM is engaged in. They say here in Texas that it is going to be used for recreational purpose. That's not what has largely happened. They will use a little bit for recreational purposes, but then they will turn it around and give it to some large foreign companies in many cases, as we've seen done in Arizona uh, against uh, Apache lands taking the massive copper mines there, breaking the treaties with the Indians. Governor Abbott has responded to this, and we've talked about his sending a letter to the BLM, but I want to read you exactly what he said to them, because I want you to see how strongly he came back and pushed against this. He says, and they quote some headlines, government tells rancher his land no longer belongs to him. Land grab. These are not headlines in distant autocratic dictatorships. Again, this is a letter to the director of the BLM from our governor here in Texas. The governor says, these are headlines in Texas after a recent meeting where representatives from the BLM made it clear that the federal government persists in its efforts to take control of the land along the Texas-Oklahoma border. Land that has been privately owned and managed for decades. I write for a third time to ask that you cease and desist this federal land grab. As Attorney General, I ask for clarification regarding the BLM's claim of ownership of vast lands held by Texans along the Red River. The BLM has yet to identify what land the federal government newly claims as its own. Texas will not wait for answers any longer. The landowners along the Red River have lived and labored on this land for generations. The BLM now inexplicably seeks to take control of thousands of acres of private land for undetermined recreational activities. Yeah, right. Explaining to landowners that the process is long and complex, that the surveys will be done, or that landowners will eventually be able to file a, quote, color of title lawsuit is neither a solution nor solace. Instead, it is an illegal taking. That is an illegal taking in and of itself. He is exactly right. He says it harms the Texans 